My name is Gerald Times. I'm an international chess coach, and I am Chess Scene in New York. Actually, uh, my brother taught me how to uh, move the pieces. Uh, I was this was I was bored uh, one day. It was actually three of them: it was my brother, uh, a friend of mine's, and his father. And they, they just set me down and, and they taught me how to move the pieces. At that moment, I knew chess was a, a pageantry, a, a kingdom, and uh, and I studied on my own. They they really didn't have to move. Anything. My international rating was uh, 2,400. This was somewhere back in uh, 2001, 2002. I think at that point I was like number maybe six, seventh in terms of rated black chess player in the world. Working, uh, I was working with the zone for for about eight years. Uh, and he felt he had this dynamic coach that was no longer uh, who didn't have a position in New York. Uh, McAnulty had visited South Africa several times, and one of the things that he uh, noticed was that there wasn't any chess in the townships. I mean, as ironic as it may seem, chess is still a very elite sport in South Africa. It belongs to the minority population. And when I say the minority population, I mean the, the white population in, in South Africa. Uh, there has only been one black South African champion, one colored champion. Uh, the word colored in South Africa is not actually considered a derogatory term. Colored in America may be, may be perceived as a, uh, something of the past. Uh, but color in South Africa is still very much alive. It's still a part of national uh, identity. And so there's only been one colored uh, uh, South African champion, and the, all, all the other South African champions have been white. So to get chess inside of the poor communities is, is almost unheard of in, in South Africa. And maybe it took a, a, an organization like the McAnulty Foundation to chess in terms of, of tournaments and, and travel for the kids, uh, but ultimately it was to bring a, a trainer over. I would say I had a, a threefold function in South Africa. My, my main job was to train kids inside of, of the townships. Uh, the other job was to train trainers, meaning that uh, the science of training, or the, say, the pedagogy of chess training, is not as pronounced in that part of the world as, as, it, as it is, let's say, in Russia or even here in the United States. Uh, so I had to train the trainers. And then uh, I became the first American uh, to coach a national team in, in, in South Africa. And so I helped in terms of competitive play. Talking about the post-apartheid era. Uh, and so um, Nelson Mandela is both a, uh, during the apartheid, he was a fighter, a resistance fighter that, that was imprisoned for 27 years. Uh, yet he was known, even though he was in prison, he, he, he was uh, known internationally. Uh, and it was his uh, patience, his perseverance that, ins that, that inspired so, so, so many. And if you are around Mandela, you can feel a certain level of magnanimity of spirit, uh, which I think ultimately uh, leadership is not just philosophical, uh, but leadership is also a, a what you inspire in, in, in other people. In people, uh, so Mandela was a one of the forces. I'm, I'm up with Stephen Biko, with Robert Sabuke, with Chris Honey. He's one of the forces of change uh, in, in in the country. Uh, the key part of Mandela is that the, the country could have gone either way. It could have gone into a civil war. Um, Mandela chose to, to, to have, let's say, a, a conversation as opposed to a battle. And the country could have burned. I mean, I mean when, I, when I got there, many, when I spoke to the white South Africans who call themselves Afrikaners, when I spoke to the Afrikaners, uh, when you ask them, why did apartheid end? Uh, was it the resistance of the ANC? Was it international pressure? And of course, it, it was all those things. Uh, but ultimately, they, they will tell you they did not want to see the, con the country burn. And so Mandela is the birth, he, he's the father of the new nation. He's the father of the democratic South Africa, what, what, what Africa can be. Uh, and his humanitarian spirit in, in, inspired others. However, the, the divide is still there very much in, in South Africa. 
still the minority po population owns 80% of the land. Still the minority population owns 80% of, the, of, of the wealth. Uh, I lived in Cape Town. If you speak to uh, many Africans, they, they would tell you it's still one of the most racist parts of, 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 of all of Africa. Uh, so there's, there's still a long, we, we talked about the long walk to freedom, there's still a long way uh, uh, to go. Uh, but at the same token, uh, young blacks are embracing global culture. Well, uh, Kenny Solomon uh, is uh, considered colored. If he was, an, I tell Kenny, I said, Kenny, if you were in America, you would not be colored. You, you'd be a brother in America. Um, so Kenny Solomon, at the last Olympiad, the 2012 uh, Olympiad, he made his third norm. Actually, he made two norms. The Olympiad is very unique because if you make a, a, a GM norm, it's actually considered two norms in, in the chess Olympiad. Uh, so, however, Grandmaster requires two things. Grandmaster requires three norms plus a, a 2,500 FIDE rating. At this point in, in sub-Saharan sub African history, uh, there's only one GM, which is uh, Amon Sematoya. The other uh, one could have been Kenny Solomon, but his FIDE rating is still far. He, uh, at the time that he made it, he was 2430, and I think since then he's dropped 80 points to 2350. Uh, so he, he was South Africa's best hope of becoming a, um, the, uh, the, a GM. Uh, yes, I see, in terms to answer, to answer your question in context, there's talent all over the place. A lot of dynamic talent. I mean, for example, for example Watu Kabesi is other, he also has two GM norms. Uh, and uh, Kabesi was he's what they consider Koza. The majority population in South Africa is Zulu. Uh, they they represent about 20 million in a nation of 50 million, which means that the Zulu population is for, is 40 percent of the South African population. Of the Koza population, however, the most of the famous South Africans that, that you know, the Miriam Makibas, the Winnie Mandelas, uh, the Bishop Tutus, the Stephen Bicos, they tend to be Koza, including Nelson Mandela. Uh, so here is Watu Kabesi. Uh, he was a child prodigy in uh, the game. Uh, he, he did make two GM norms, but he was not able to achieve the third norm, uh, nor was he able to achieve uh, the rating, mostly due to economics. Grandmaster performance is not really a measure of intellectual talent, I mean, because I think a lot of these guys are intellectually talented. Uh, grandmaster performance is also ultimately a measure of, of economics. You need the money for training, for travel, uh, and for tournament fees. And at this point uh, in, their, in their history, in their development, South Africa does not have uh, the monies, or at least uh, didn't have interest in, in promoting many, many of the uh, talented uh, black ch uh, chess players in the country. The philosophy of the Bear School was classic. I was a Harlem guy. Remember, I'm a Harlem guy. So the Bear, these are Brooklyn guys. And um, it was competitive. One, one of the great things is they said you had to play a chess game for money. And uh, what that means is that anybody can say, I'm better than you, but, but you have to put your money on the table to prove that you were actually uh, be uh, better than a person. Well, I like the, uh, I like the Jays. I really do like the Jays, uh, the, 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 the Gerons, the Joshuas, the Justice, uh, and the James.